Hey, so I just got home and uh, I'm in Atlanta. I've just been delivered a package. That package is an iPad. And on that iPad is a script. This pillow's doing my nothing. And that script is Spider-Man 3. So I'm about to find out what I'm going to be doing for the next five months. I'm not going to tell you anything about it because I've learned my lesson. But um, I'm so excited. Oh, shit. I broke this iPad. Um, okay, I'm going to read this now. And I can't wait. And I'll speak to you all soon. Okay, so we just landed in Atlanta. And uh, <laughs> it's time for Spider-Man 3. Let's go! Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. The spectacular spoiler man is at it again. So this is gonna be my new Spider-Man 3 video. Tom Holland just arrived on the set. We got Benedict Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange coming in pretty soon too. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We have a bunch of big stuff coming up before the end of the year too. Bunch of big Marvel, bunch of big Star Wars Mandalorian stuff. We'll do a new Disney Plus giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what kind of multiverse Easter eggs you want to see during Spider-Man 3. So just starting with the big stuff first. Recently, Tom Holland posted videos of himself arriving in Atlanta to shoot Spider-Man 3. Finally, he'd been finishing his work on the Uncharted movie, also from Sony. Sony doing both of those movies. And if you remember from Spider-Man Far From Home, this video of him trying to spoil the movie using the script is basically the exact same thing that he did a couple years ago with the title reveal. He was walking around with the iPad and just flashed to the screen like, oops, what I just do there? I wanted to apologize because there's no real revelations coming out this weekend about Spider-Man 2. I don't know much about it. Um, I'm a little confused because I died. So I don't really know how it all comes into play, but I do know is I got the new script. I'm super excited to read it and it's going to be great. So yeah, Spider-Man 2, let's do this. Nowadays, a lot of the stuff that Tom Holland spoils is on purpose as part of Sony's marketing department scripting everything for him behind the scenes. So it's a little less spontaneous. It's not quite as cool as when he's actually spoiling stuff. Like here's the part where you talk and then you hold the tablet up and show them what the title of the movie is. Don't worry, they'll give us a Spider-Man 3 title reveal later this year. There was a Sony marketing executive saying that they were going to release a preview by December. This video is actually a much better example of what a free-flowing Tom Holland spectacular spoiler man looks like when he's actually getting ready to spoil something for real. Like this is Benedict Cumberbatch running interference in interviews trying to stop him from doing that. Mm, oh, I can't talk careful. about this. I can't no. talk about this. Oh, moving, yes. on, moving on, moving if on. Benedict wasn't My here. sense was going, what the <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All those Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame videos of them together will also remind you Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange is going to be the big Avengers crossover character in Spider-Man 3. The pitch that all the Hollywood trades were reporting was that Doctor Strange would be taking Iron Man's place as sort of a mentor figure to Spider-Man. I'll address all the Doctor Strange stuff during the movie later in the video. But number four, of course Tom Holland just as hyped up about Spider-Man 3 as you are. In talking about future Venom crossover, the director of the Uncharted movie that he was just working on is Ruben Fleischer, the director of the Venom movie. Andy Serkis is directing Venom 2. I mean, they've already finished filming. They're in post-production right now. But he did that for a couple reasons. Mostly because when it came time to roll a camera on Venom 2, Ruben Fleischer wasn't going to be ready to film the movie. But Sony wanted to get started and they still liked him. So the Uncharted movie was supposed to start filming after Venom 2. So they just put him on that. And there's a little more humor in that film. He's more of a comedic director. Andy Serkis is a little bit better with motion capture, which is super important for the way that they film the Venom and Carnage characters. So it was just a big upgrade to bring Andy Serkis onto the movie. The virus just messed all the movie schedules up for everyone's movies. So that's why they decided to have Tom Holland film Uncharted before he filmed Spider-Man 3. Right now, Spider-Man 3 is still coming out during the Christmas holiday next year. They're on the same turnover schedule as they were on the last two Spider-Man movies. So just in terms of spotting the new Spider-Man suits and things on the set that they feature in the movie, we might get a look at those later in December or early next year. Really any time that they need to film outdoors with him in the new costumes. That's really when you find out about that stuff. And that's when they have him go on Jimmy Kimmel and officially reveal everything. Like, yeah, we know that you all saw this on set, but this is what's going on. Right. Hey, oh, Colin. here we go. That's you, right? No, that's Matt's mask. Mine's the one with the white oh, eyes. Oh, right, 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 right. All right, here you go. 
So as you go without saying, yes, Spider-Man is probably going to get a couple new suits during Spider-Man 3, just like he got the new black stealth suit from Nick Fury, and then he made the Steve Ditko-inspired classic Spider-Man suit for himself using Iron Man's fabricator. We all saw all those different suit Easter eggs that Iron Man had designs for. I think the logic there is that when Iron Man was designing the Stark Tech suit originally for Captain America Civil War, then the Iron Spider suit for Spider-Man Homecoming, he was workshopping a ton of different iterations, and all those iterations were just different versions from the comics. Obviously, we all want to see Spider-Man wear a version of the symbiote at some point, but I believe that they're saving that for a big, big Venom Spider-Man crossover. All the different suits that they show during this montage, though, are the comic book Iron Spider, the classic colors, the superior Spider-Man Dr. Octopus suit, the ends of the Earth Spider-Man armor, the classic Spider armor, and the Secret War suit. Not to be confused with Secret Wars. Secret War is a different event that happened a little bit later. Marvel just really liked using the Secret War's name because it was such a popular event. Number three, the big thing about Spider-Man 3 that's different in terms of him getting new Spider-Man suits and technology is mostly that he's on the run, arguably for the entire film. So logically, it just wouldn't make as much sense for him to have a super flashy, fully loaded version of the suit. Classic Spider-Man never really carried around that much gear on him beyond the mechanical web shooters and the refill cartridges and his webbing fluid. A lot of you longtime comic book Spider-Man fans have been calling for Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man to be doing more stuff on his own, not needing help from Iron Man or the other Avengers. Kevin Feige and the Spider-Man movie producers have been talking about how Spider-Man Far From Home was supposed to be him quote-unquote graduating to make as many high school metaphors as possible, so to speak, from Spider-Boy to becoming Spider-Man. Even the costume designer on the movie that designed the new Spider-Man suit said that that was what that was meant to signify. Him making the suit, doing that big Iron Man callback Easter egg where he's putting his hands on all that tech, is meant to be him graduating to Spider-Man. So the odds of his next new Spider-Man suits in Spider-Man 3 being way more homemade versions of the suit are like a thousand percent greater. He's on his own, nowhere to run. What is he going to do after the first few major action scenes with the Sinister Six villains in the movie like Electro when they shred his suit? Number two, speaking of big costume Easter eggs, since Doctor Strange is crossing over, there's a big Spider-Man Easter egg from the comics that I hope they go for just paying off something that they set up way back during Avengers Infinity War. When Spider-Man and Iron Man boarded Ebony Maw's ship to save Doctor Strange, Peter's waiting up trying to figure out what to do next, and Doctor Strange's cloak of levitation shows up with Iron Man. They talk it out, then Peter tries to have a moment with the cloak, but it stiffs him and just takes off like, don't leave me hanging, bro. But in the comics, Spider-Man did wear a cape once, and they even turned it into a joke during Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man does not wear a cape, nope, and then the cape shows up later in the Spider-Cave. They can totally pay off that Avengers Infinity War spider cape joke in Spider-Man 3 or even Doctor Strange 2 if Spider-Man is also going to have a cameo scene in that movie briefly. Then of course, number one, what is Doctor Strange actually going to be doing during Spider-Man 3? So if he's supposed to be a mentor to Spider-Man on the level of Iron Man, that really means like two longer scenes early in the movie and at the end of the movie, with him also giving a little assist during one of the major battles. So Doctor Strange would have seen Mysterio's video at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home. The whole world was meant to see the video. So as Spider-Man goes on the run, the producers were joking that he literally has nowhere to hide in that Sinister Six teaser that I did a couple days ago. Where would he actually go to hide? The Sanctum. That's the only place he'd really be safe. So remember that funny scene in Thor Ragnarok where they're standing outside wondering what to do next after they can't find Odin, and out of nowhere, a portal just opens below Loki, snatching him. Imagine Spider-Man getting a version of that early in the movie, like he's running, ducks into an alleyway, and just as he's about to get caught, Doctor Strange opens a portal, yoinking him to the Sanctum, helping him out. You also have to remember the multiverse of it all. Scarlet Witch in WandaVision has already thoroughly messed up the multiverse at this point in Marvel Phase 4. We're probably going to start seeing some Spider-Man multiverse Easter eggs sort of paying off the setup that they had for Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home. I'm not expecting a ton of live-action Spider-Verse stuff right away. I just feel like they want to see that idea out there so that they can actually turn it into a movie down the road if they want to go that far. But everyone, let me know in the comments, what else do you want to see Doctor Strange do during Spider-Man 3? And when do you want to see Tom Holland start spoiling stuff? My video for the Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1 video is going to post on Friday. They'll be doing weekly episodes, 8 episodes total, just like Season 1. After that is when we're getting all the Avengers WandaVision episodes. I'll also be doing videos for that too. So make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you see all the videos.
But while you wait for everything, click here for that brand new Avengers Moon Knight teaser trailer video that they just released and click here for my brand new Spider-Man 3 Sinister 6 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.